Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Catholic Talk Show. Today we're going to be talking about how the Catholic Church uses candles. That's right. We're going to shine a light on the use of candles in the Catholic Church from everything from baptism, celebrations, and much more. Let your light shine before all. Today we're talking about the Lumen Christi. Deo gratias. Very nice. Mm, thank you. Guys, really cool topic. We got some candles out here. Um, there's a lot of things I think people are going to find out today about the use of candles in the Catholic Church that they m might not have known, probably, most likely. Most likely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, candles is one of those things that are really closely and synonymously tied with Catholic worship. Uh, you know, you take just about anyone off the street and you say, well, what does a Catholic church look like? They're going to say, oh, well, there's a crucifix, there's candles, you know, there's incense, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but there's a lot of you know a lot of really deep uh, symbolism, yeah. a lot of deep tradition, and a lot of really interesting facts, uses, and then also their sacramental nature. So we're gonna yeah. try to get into all that today. Now and before it, we before we get started, a big shout out goes to you, Catholic, because these candles are incredible. I'm so grateful. The I feel like this is a chapel right now, but our studio smells like chrism, and I love. The smell of chrism. That's what that was. My hands were anointed with the chrism oil, and then it's also the chrism at baptism. You know, we use this. This is the most treasured oil of them all, and you know, the scent is on point. I yeah. am absolutely impressed. This is the most favorable smell of chrism I've ever smelled. That's not the actual chrism. Well, this is the actual chrism. It's just not blessed. They oh, use really? the actual chrism that's mixed with olive oil. Wow! In these candles, so they, it's a really expensive candle to make. Um, it does make our studio smell incredibly better awesome. than it Praise normally God. does. Because <laughs> I hope I'm not, you know, dis, you know, sure too much to any it. secrets. But there's three dudes in a small sma space. We smell like a bunch of water yaks, you know. And Howard too. Oh, and Howard, he's in the I corner mean, yeah. fighting it oh, up. Wow. It's like fish. <laughs> it smells like fish. Gordon's fish Gordon's fisherman. Fisherman. Like, What's so cool about about some of the stuff we were talking before the show? It's just the use of fire for ages and ages. That's right. Um, how, you know, rituals almost always included fire. Like fire was uh, elevated to uh, a deity sort of status in, in, in pagan very, cultures. very early pagan cultures. Um, and the assimilation of that is what I think the church does so well and to provide it with a lot of deep and profound meaning. Talking about fire, I know another fire. Our Fired Up fans and our followers on social media. We're on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And by far, the people who are most fired up about the Catholic Talk Show are patrons. That's right. We want to give a big shout out to our patrons. Without your financial support, the chapel, the studio, all of this, all of the material that we put out there week to week would not be possible without you. Yeah. If you are considering to become a financial supporter of the show, go to catholictalkshow.com forward slash Patreon. You'll see all the different tiers, and we've got awesome gear like Catholic Talk Show hoodies, bobbleheads, all sorts of wonderful things that we want to send your way in gratitude. Awesome. So, Ryan, you're talking about how ancient cultures really valued fire. And that's because it was so integral to life. I mean, you had to cook your food, you had to boil yeah. your water, you had to have light in the dark, light. scary night, man. I mean, yeah. fire was an incredibly important commodity almost, right? But, you know, even if you go back to the Temple of Solomon, you'll see candles and candelabras and the, the menorah as things that are divinely mandated mm -hmm. by God to be integrated into worship. So, and that perpetual flame that's burning right. in the midst yeah. of the temple. Right. The holy of holies. Yeah, and, and, yeah. and that's to show the presence God. of God. And like what we're getting to is there, there's a real clear sense in, in just the natural order of the universe, the distinction between light and darkness mm -hmm. and what the light actually represents. And to really tie to the temple, we can't start anywhere but going back to the Old Testament and looking to the temple and what that light represents is truly the presence of God. Absolutely. So, I mean, if you look at the burning bush or if you look at the pillar of, of smoke and cloud, you know, a lot of times God the Father will represent himself as fire, right? Amen. Uh, or if you look at Elijah, right? And mm -hmm. the, the, Holy the fiery chariot. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But 
in Christian use. So, at, you know, after Christ's ascension, okay, well, what do we do now? Do we still just do temple worship? What do we do? And you'll see that the Christians start to develop, and they're using the same same form in a lot of times, but the meaning because of the new covenant becomes right. elevated, mm -hmm. right? So candles now go back to, you know, the words of Christ, you know, I am the light of the world. And this light now becomes a symbol of Christ piercing the darkness. And it becomes very incredibly important within worship. You'll even see as early as the third and fourth centuries, uh, people lighting candles on the tombs of martyrs, that they're always there, that that light of Christ is there. So, you know, early Christian texts are pretty sparse because of the persecutions. Mm -hmm. But really, from the very beginning, Catholics have been using candles. Now, one of the really cool things is that it's not just any candles. Now, you go to, I don't know, Yankee Candle Company, you're probably going to get soy or paraffin or whatever. But in the Catholic Church, candles need to be a very specific formulation. Mm -hmm. And that means they have to be at least 51% beeswax mm. um, to be, I guess, fit for liturgical use. And that's like, I guess, you know, even in the mass, we have, you know, the work of human hands, the fruit of the vine, you know, that God gives us this world that we live in and all these meaningful things that he comes to us with, um, and including uh, beeswax. Absolutely. You know? There's a lot of meaning even with bees and beeswax, too. How do you, you mean? Know? Well, the wax is, 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 you know, obviously we're lighting a candle, so we have the light of Christ. Just like we have the light of Christ in 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 the tabernacle, right? Mm -hmm. Christ is there, present in the tabernacle. We have a light there, which I think we'll be talking about. Mm -hmm. But also, the church is a home. It's, mm -hmm. it's a place where communities gather around this light, this light of Christ, um, and help each other out and move each other forward and live as a community. And the the beeswax is literally that. It is the it is the walls <clears throat> of their home, right? Mm -hmm. It is it is their home. Um, so you know you have the meaning with the light, but also <clears throat> with the beeswax, we've got. You know, some meaning there too as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. the bees are creating their home out of it, and it's holding it together. And, and, and you see that a lot. You do, and you, and you even see it working its way into the liturgy all the way back to St. Augustine's time where the Easter proclamation, the exalted that is sung in the Easter vigil, there is a reference to the work of bees. And mother well, bees. Yeah, mother bees specifically. So bees. let's take a moment here and just kind of look at the exultet as it relates to the handiwork of man and the work of mother bees, and then really kind of focus in on the Easter vigil as we re we reflect on fire and yeah. light and this interplay between light and darkness. Right there. It, it is. really is. So the this is just a, an excerpt from the Exalted. I highly recommend looking at the whole text. So you could search that online by looking at Easter Proclamation or Exalted. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners, drives out hatred, fosters concord, and brings down the mighty. On this, your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of bees and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar which glowing fire ignites for God's honor, a fire into many flames divided, yet never dimmed by sharing of its light. For it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother bees to build a torch so precious. It's awesome. Oh, I just get chills every time that I dive into that beautiful ancient text. You know, it, it, st it always stuck with me, the mother bees part. You know, mother bees, not just bees, not worker bees, mother bees, and, and the church is called our mother but one of the, symb the symbolisms of candles is that the wax itself, the beeswax, is the flesh given to Christ through his mother, Mary. Mm. And the wick represents his soul. And then the fire represents his divinity. So you see this, you, you see almost a catechism of right. the nature of Christ in a candle. Yeah. And you that's know? like, I mean, with my children and everything in mass, because there's so many things, senses, to, you know, are, are going all over the place. They 
point to the smoke, they point to the lights, and it's a great catechetical tool, mm -hmm. education tool, where I can explain that to them, and it resonates a, a lot. And that's drawn all the way back to when your children and all of the baptized were commissioned with mm -hmm. a candle. Mm -hmm. So every single Catholic, everybody that's listening in or viewing our content on YouTube, and if you're viewing the content, click subscribe, click the little bell so that you don't miss any of our content. But Every single one of us have received from the priest a candle, and the priest charges us to keep that flame burning, to keep that light illuminated by Christ throughout our lives. Mm -hmm. And and that candle is is really every Catholic has a candle. Do you still have yours? Uh, my mom has it in a safe deposit box. <laughs> with yeah. all those baseball cards. <laughs> with all my baseball cards. You know, I got a rookie, uh, you know, some rookie cards <laughs> in there. Conseco. Yeah, Conseco. <laughs> tell tell everybody about your um, experience with your grandmother's passing. It, w uh, it was crazy experience, but I was with her day in and day out praying the rosary on her behalf. She prayed four rosaries a day and... and um, you know, it got to the point where she couldn't pray anymore. So I was, I prayed the rosary with her this one particular day. And, and I just said, Nanny, I've got to go hear confessions. And I looked up on top of her hutch and I saw her baptismal candle. So I pulled it down and I lit it next to her and the candle had burnt down to its base and the hospice nurse left the room and, you know, communicated to my parents that, you know, uh, she's stable, doing well. I'm, I'm just going to head out and get, jump on a phone call. So my stepdad hopped into the room, and at this point, the candle had burnt all the way down to its base, and it was coming to its its very end. And he went over to it as it was just wax, a melted wax. He blew it out, and right when he blew it out, that was when my grandmother breathed her last breath mm -hmm. on earth. And you know, it's just it's so consoling. It was so consoling. I preached about it as well. But that's the reality of what we receive in the light in baptism, because it's indicated to be carried through death so that what we cannot see, the mystery before us that veils us all, that light will lead us through the darkness of death into new life. And to see that happen symbolically, sacramentally, and, and as a sacramental of the faith for my grandmother was really a, a, a very impactful thing for that's me. Awesome. That's a really incredible story. I mean, that's just so beautiful. And to, I mean, Grandma's probably pretty old at that point. And that mm -hmm. candle's still there, and that it finally it a lot to her. was gently mm -hmm. extinguished. And with that, she went. You know, uh, it makes me think about how you know there's candles at at funerals too. The Paschal okay. candle is lit next to a funeral, uh, yeah. next to Often. a casket yeah. during yeah. a funeral to represent your baptismal vows and to call that into mind too. Mm -hmm. So, you mm -hmm. know, from birth to death, candles play an important mm -hmm. role in the Catholic Church and in the life of a Catholic. And but, that lit Paschal candle next to the next to the casket of our loved ones is the same Paschal candle that's drawn from when the first baptismal candle is given to us. So, you know, there's there's those bookend tie-ins where, uh, you know, where do we even light this Paschal candle? Well, it comes at the culmination of the Blessed Triduum, the Holy Triduum that we re that we remember during Holy Week, from Holy Thursday to Good Friday to the Easter Vigil, we celebrate on that night a four part liturgy, and that first part of the four part liturgy of Easter Vigil is the service of light, and that's where the priest, the presider, blesses the fire, and out of this holy fire are drawn the coals for incense. And then the incense is billowing, and then the Paschal candle is lit, and then in procession, the Paschal candle leads us into the midst of the church, the gathering that we all gather after Christ's death, but we're anticipating the light breaking through the darkness and the dawn of the resurrection. So it's just such a powerful experience when you realize that from that light in the presence of the church and the very central teachings of our faith— that light illuminates all lights. And that's what we heard in the Exalted too. You know, the, the light is is being spread out and divided, you know, but undimmed, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you think about that from the very beginning until now, how many baptisms, funerals, and, and celebrations of the Easter mysteries of Christ's resurrection over the, over death, how many times those candles have been lit. It's awesome. Yeah. The Paschal candle, I think is an underlooked and, and sadly underlooked element in the church, right? 
Um, it's so important to, I guess, a, so many different liturgies throughout the year. Uh, I know that when it's lit, it's lit all the way through Ascension, right? Mm-hmm. And then it's put out to show that, you know, Christ has ascended into heaven, but then the other candles in the church would traditionally still be lit from the Paschal candle. So it's kind of like the Holy Spirit illuminating the church. Um, I know when you when you bless the candle, you there's kind of like this ceremony. You're like sticking all kinds of stuff mm-hmm. into it. You're putting yeah. the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. You know, you're you're tracing the year on it. That's, That's a pretty cool. fascinating oh, it's rite. Awesome. It's such a, it's my favorite liturgy of the year. Yeah. Uh, you know, the holy fire the night before, oh, yeah. and then it just goes out. Everyone's getting this light of Christ. It's it's really a remarkable thing. Even if you're not Catholic, yeah. this year. Go to a Catholic church on the Easter Vigil and watch this. It is, aside from being incredibly holy, it is really, I think, one of the coolest human experiences you can have. I mean, you can go watch a concert or a baseball game or a movie. This is as beautiful a work of humanity as mm-hmm. anything else. I mean, check it out. And what's represented in the service of light is the congregants that are present that are baptized members of Christ. They are there with lighted candles. So the light is spread throughout the church in the service of light where all of the artificial lighting is off. Right. And now you just see the fire spreading, which is a really cool experience. And then ultimately to realize that the people among the congregants that are not baptized, the catechumens, they do not have their candles lit until later in that liturgy yeah, that's when cool. they're brought into the faith. That's really cool. And then they go out and light all of the candles again, and now they're all together. It's, I mean, it's just a yeah. fabulous experience. That's awesome. Um, Brian, you and I, we've said, mentioned this before, but we went to the Hill of Slain in Ireland where St. Patrick lit that first Paschal fire in Ireland, mm-hmm. you know, in defiance of the king. It's just, it's such a powerful, yeah. really cool thing. Um, so there's a lot of other times, though, that in the life of the church that we use candles. And I think one of the ones that is most familiar to people is the Advent wreath, right? It's yeah. four candles. You light one for each week of Advent. There's three purple and one pink, you know. Did you guys uh, at, in your house, in the Della Cross house, uh, use an Advent candle at all? We, candles and my kids, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we uh, we tried one year. Um, Did somebody eat one? Some of them are getting older, so I might be able to bring it back. But yeah, we had a few problems with that. <laughs> <laughs> a few problems. Get some electric candles at least. But yeah, for, for that's, me, that's I, I, I have such a fond memory of being with my grandparents oh, awesome. and lighting the candle. Um, each weekend. Um, And and it's very, very symbolic. And especially for a young person, when we consider how important family catechesis is and that experience in the home, I think real evangelization takes place in the domestic church, without a doubt. And, um, you know, to have the Advent wreath, that's why we provide so many of them for our our parish families here at St. John Paul II. But um, what a beautiful way to move through one of the sacred uh, seasons of the calendar in Advent. Yeah. So why don't you tell everyone why there is, well, four candles mm-hmm. and why one of them is mm-hmm. a different color. Give them a little mini catechesis on this so they can teach their kids so if they don't know. At the conclusion of, of Christ, uh, at the conclusion of the liturgical calendar, we celebrate Christ, the King of the universe. Okay. We begin to reflect on Christ coming back to judge the living and the dead. And then we shift into a brand new liturgical calendar, a brand new year. So it doesn't shift at the end of like, you know, December mm-hmm. into January 1st. Mm-hmm. It actually shifts on the first Sunday of Advent. That's when we begin a new liturgical year. Sometimes there's graces or specific themes or folks that's set by the Holy Father, Mm -hmm. but we essentially move through four weeks leading up to Christmas. And within the first couple of weeks of Advent, we reflect purely on Christ coming back to judge the living and the dead. So we reflect on the end times that we would be prepared for that. So it's a season... Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's it's a season of penance and mortification. That's what purple represents. So there's a there's a sense of that, but also a re- renewal, an advent, a new beginning oh. of goodness. So it's our time to make our New Year's resolution in a way yeah. and put into practice this renewal that can come through the season of penance and mortification. And then going closer to what's called Gaudete Sunday into the last week of Advent, Now we see Gaudete rejoice that facing death, 
facing the darkness of the world and, and the unknown, Christ has come to meet us. So we have to rejoice. Now we start shifting in the anticipation mm-hmm. of what we focus in at Christmas. So then we start reflecting on the coming of the Messiah. And that's the pink candle. And that's the pink candle. That's the rose candle. Are you still in the candle. penitential season? Absolutely. You're still in the okay. penitential but, season. But that day... Um, is a release from some of the penances. It's mm-hmm. like a mercy from the church, okay. mm-hmm. some of the penances that you're undertaking. And, and that Advent. we should be filled with jubilation. We right. should be celebrating Gaudete Sunday in the same way that Laetare Sunday and Lent is celebrated with the rose-colored vestments. It's the same thing in Advent as those well. Those are only two times a year you get to wear those, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, two times. Yeah. Two times. Um, and then, obviously, that last candle is also... Purple as well. And and so on any of those Sundays, the vestments you're wearing is matching the candle that's being lit. Correct. Mm-hmm. And you'll see sometimes people will add a fifth candle to light on Christmas, mm-hmm. which is white, which would also mat- match what you're wearing. But, you know, I've never done the white candle mm-hmm. one. But mm-hmm. uh, it's, it's a great tradition. It's very beautiful. And it's a great way to teach your kids each week. You know, well, number one, it helps the anticipation of Christmas. But it also, yeah. it's, it's fun. The kids love that. Yeah, I mean, like. You know, it kind of reminds me of like a menorah with the, the Juda- Judaism. Well, you yeah, know. yeah, I mean, it's different, obviously, a way different meaning, but the, how they use candles during the duration. Well, you know, we have Christmas, they have Hanukkah, Hanukkah right? Yeah. And Hanukkah is talking about the miraculous event where uh, the the menorah was lit with enough oil. They only had enough oil to burn for one day, but they needed it to burn for eight days to reconsecrate the temple after mm-hmm. it had been defamed, and. Um, miraculously it lit. That's why it's eight days of light off of one miraculous, I guess, uh, portion of oil to keep those lamps lit. It's a penitential mm-hmm. season for them, too. Yeah. And and our high feasts, when we're celebrating, for example, the Holy Father, if it's a pontifical mass or uh, the bishop coming, you'll see seven candles mm-hmm. uh, lit. It's coming from that tradition. So what we are celebrating in mystery is definitely realized in that, uh, that lineage of what you're bringing up. And it's important to see. Now, once again, you have the that eternal flame burning in the midst of the temple. You know, that reveals the presence of God. You have the menorah. You have the candles being lit Mm -hmm. at at the Easter vigil, then being divided. And now you even you're starting to see why there are so many candles even on the altar for different celebrations Uh, like the the former, you know, the uh, traditional high mass, um, you know, that was celebrated. There would be six candles on the altar. And what all of this represents in practice is tied to the Judaism, the, the roots of Judaism in our mm-hmm. practice. Yeah. And there'd also be a seventh candle lit mm-hmm. once the consecration was affected. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So talking about Christmas, right? So we, everyone's burning up all these candles during Christmas. Okay. Um, and a lot of people think Christmas ends on you know December 26, but it doesn't. Mm-hmm. Christmas, the liturgical season of Christmas, traditionally ends on February 2nd, mm-hmm. which is the Feast of Candle Mass. Yeah. That's Candle Mass. The Feast of Presentation. Right. And, and people even think, well, maybe Epiphany, like I'll, I'll keep up my tree or my Christmas lights until Epiphany. No, it's like st- stick around. Like what we're really focusing on is all the way to the end, mm-hmm. you know, Epiphany is very important as it relates to light in the darkness, but move all the way to the end of the presentation. And what are we remembering at the presentation? Mary presenting Jesus, right? And then the prophecy of Simeon, that he is a light to all nations. Mm -hmm. And this kind of draws in the mystery of Christmas at its conclusion, because now Mary is purified. She goes through the purification rites. And now now we have that full display in Revelation. Yeah, and that's traditionally when Catholics would take their candles for the year, take them to the church, and they would be blessed on that day mm-hmm. because like even these candles from you Catholic, you, you can't sell blessed candles. You can't sell blessed items. So they're, you know, of a proper form, mm-hmm. but you do have to have them blessed, which I hope you'll do for us later in this episode. Oh, I'd be happy to. And please, if you're out there and you're listening into this show or viewing us right now, make sure you pick up candles and save them for the feast of the presentation for mm-hmm. candle mass and ask your priest to bless your candles. I have people bring in boxes of candles, like just a couple of parishioners, but I would love to see so many more of my faithful yeah. coming in with candles that I could bless at that mass. And it won't hurt to have those can- those blessed beeswax candles on the three days of darkness either. Let me tell you that. That's right. Now let's go to something a little bit negative about <laughs> candles in the church, right? Oh, we've been talking about all these. Are you talking tra- about the electric ones that oh, you can no, push? No, no, no. I don't like those. <laughs> We're <laughs> talking about some beautiful traditions in the church of, you know, candle mass and the Easter and and the Absolutely. Advent calendar. 
uh, Advent wreath. But sometimes the church uses candles in a negative way. So actually when a person's excommunicated, part oh, of the yeah. old rite of excommunication is that the bishop would pronounce the excommunication mm. and 12 priests would be holding candles. And then once the <sighs> anathema was officially read, the candles are extinguished and mm. crushed underfoot. But, um, so I mean, that's a pretty, yeah. that's, that's pretty heavy, right? Oh, yeah. But there's also a beautiful other side to that is that when a person is received back into the church after the excommunication has been lifted, the sign that that's been confected and the sign that they've been accepted back into the church is that the newly be received back person is handed a lit candle. Oh, wow. So, you know, your light is extinguished when you're excommunicated, but when you're brought back home, you're given the light of Christ again. And it's that's such awesome. a beautiful whole, I guess... Economy. tradition economy of the church that I don't know if a lot of people know that. I don't know if they still do that, but that was definitely what the old uh, right was. Excommunication and an extinguished light as it ties to the sense of baptism mm -hmm. is, is such a emphasis on what has occurred as being a violation of one's by baptismal identity, that the light is extinguished. When you're charged by the priest during the ritual to keep this light continually burning, you know, like it, that sense of the importance of, of maintaining that light, preserving that light is so important. But what that excommunication expresses, wow. Right. I mean, I'm so glad that you you shared that with us, but also that the church is always there in a form of reconciliation, mm -hmm. uh, waiting for that that to be illuminated once again, your your baptismal identity to be illuminated again in Christ. Mm -hmm. Get that candle back. Yeah, you know, candles. Candles. That's, are, that's a that's a band. Candleback. Yeah, I think it's Nickelback. <laughs> Nickelback. Oh my bad. And then there's what candle candle box. Candle box. All right, we got them switched up. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> Edit that. No, I don't even know if I've ever heard of the band Candlebox. Sure, they were <coughs> ninety something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Why are you holding the microphone like that? You're about to sing us. Well, that's sing how us the a lyric from Candlebox does. They sing like this on Candlebox. So you were telling us about anyway. <laughs> thank you. So candles are obviously used on the altar. We see that every time we go into church. Yeah. Most of the time during ordinary time, you know, it's two candles on the altar. You know, if it's a, if it's a feast day, you know, a titular feast day or, or, um, you know, a, a certain memorial that you're upholding, you could use uh, two candles, yeah. you know, um, for the high feasts of the church, like Christmas, like Easter, Christ, the King of the universe, you know, three, three candles are called for in the tradition of the church, you know, solemn high mass, there would be three candles uh, on both sides. So six candles in total. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's reflected in the church when we celebrate Easter and Christmas. Uh, Why and six candles? So it's, it's really uh, developed Three from the side. menorah yeah. in, oh, cool. initially. And then when, when a bishop celebrates or say the Holy Father, you know, that, that seventh candle, it's, it's being celebrated by uh, the pontiff or, or the bishop exercising the fullness of the priesthood. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's tied really to the menorah historically. Wow. Mm -hmm. You know, I think something that a lot of people in their mind when, you know, Say you're having, you know, date night with your wife. You like candles. You make them, you know, you make it all romantic, candle lit, right? And, you know, we have some candles lit in here, so I think it's a perfect time to talk about socks. Yes. <laughs> My feet are feeling really cozy next to this candle. Is that Thomas? Thomas? Yeah, this is St. Thomas Aquinas, okay? Aquinas. And again, you know, he wants <laughs> to talk. If you're watching, if you're listening to us on a podcast, Ryan has developed a character using socks. <laughs> from Sock Religious, that's right. Which we're going to talk about, which is our sponsor. Yeah. Right. So if we start saying really weird stuff, that's he's just doing something with his hand there. Yeah, right? and this is way better than Mister Rogers. I mean, the the effort that you put into this is I put pretty you, I put a ton of effort into yeah. this, right? So again, you know, let's talk about socks, baby. Okay. Help it to you. <laughs> sock Religious makes really really cool socks. Okay. The Pope's got one pair. Pope, Pope's got a pair of socks, right? Yeah. Um, they have all kinds of cool socks of beautiful designs. They have, um, you know, St. Benedict, you know, the nativity scene, St. Nicholas. St. Nicholas. Now, this is a great Christmas present right here. Yeah. That's oh, yeah. cool. Right? They're very some of the most nice, beautiful. Dude. They're, They're comfortable, socks. too. They're they are and very comfortable. Howard, you were in the you were in the armed forces. 
good pair of socks, nothing better, right? <laughs> <laughs> he agrees. So they make great gifts. Mm -hmm. They make they're 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 great to wear. They're super comfortable. They look cool. Great to wear to mass. Here's a nativity one. Um, cool. They have them for kids too. Here's Saint Ignatius for kids, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Or for someone with you know bound feet, maybe like a kabuki dancer or something. <laughs> Here's some Lenten ones. Kabuki dancer. Kabuki dancer. <laughs> you know, like they have those little tiny feet. Yeah, right? they do. So I don't know. Yeah, that probably wouldn't fit them either. <laughs> um, but they have they have dozens and dozens of designs. Uh, you wear them all the time, I right? I do. There, in fact, there was a recent design that one of my brother priests called him up. Father, a big shout out to Father Peck in Gainesville. But he had ones for Our Lady of La Leche made. Really? Yeah. They'll, yeah. they'll do custom designs Yeah, like they that. did custom designs. Oh, that's in, awesome. Tell them to send a picture. Yeah. And they're like in every religious store I've ever yeah. been. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sock like religious has just, they've really blown up over the last year or two because, yeah. you know, I mean, it's a cool way to just kind of have a little reminder of your faith every day. And I know you get them as gifts all the time, right? I, I literally wear these socks every single day. Really? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, no, I mean, it's like, it just depends on my mood for the day. Yeah. It's like St. Joseph, you going with? I'm putting you on my feet today, man. I need your, I need your help. Yeah. Who are you wearing today? Uh, today I'm wearing Fulton Sheen. Nice. Fulton J. Sheen. We're on the awesome. show, so I figured, you know, why not ask his intercession? He and, was on the show. Yeah, he was. he was on the show with us, so. So, yeah, again, if you want to go and take a look at these again, make great gifts, great stocking stuffers for Christmas, putting socks and socks. Um, they're great for presents. They're great for, like, baptisms, confirmations. Or just buy it for yourself. Put stocks in the socks. Look, you know? we have a we have a very sock heavy portfolio. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And we're investing in these. Sock it to me. Right. Sock it to me. So again, sock religious. <laughs> uh, if you go to CatholicTalkShow.com forward slash socks, you get a discount. You get ten percent off. Yep. Right. So I mean, if you got holy socks on right now, you, your toes are sticking out, your yeah. your toenails cutting holes in your socks, they're all stinking, everything. Yeah, you really need to get some you know, holy get socks. socks. Get some you really know, holy you socks. You know what the best thing to do in those socks is, right? What's that? It's it's use the Hallow app. That's right. It's use the Hallow app. Why don't you tell them how both of those kind of work together? <laughs> well, I mean, if you're just sitting around your house, right, and you're trying to pray, you got no shoes on, but you got your socks on, right? Yeah. Well, what are you going to do? You're just going to sit there and look at your feet all day? I mean, no. these socks are almost good looking enough to just sit there and look at your feet, but you get bored of doing yeah, that. Yeah, you got to go with So some... take out your phone, open the Hollow app. Hollow is the number one Catholic prayer app in the App Store. That's right. It has just about every feature that you can want to help you grow in your prayer life, grow in your sock life, right? It has... just keeps adding content. It's just amazing. It is. It's really, I mean, again, it's yeah. growing, 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 growing. Yeah. They have... Um, chant they have bible stories they have daily reflections they have sleep app or so they, you yeah. know if you're having a hard time sleep the yeah. jonathan Rumi will read you a story and you'll just fall right asleep or he'll and pray you... like he did on one of our shows he'll pray the our father in aramaic that's which right. i mean blew me away oh it's so beautiful they put that in the app did you that's know excellent that? that's they excellent did. they did they have so all... they just keep adding stuff to this app like mm -hmm. even and that's like why it's chosen, number one i mean th there's no unreal. app that you can compare to not Hallow. even close there's nobody close hallow's yeah. doing it right and they are really passing on the tradition of prayer and contemplation and there's something for everybody absolutely it's not just like you know different meditations yeah. journaling components i mean if you struggle meditating with god this is a great uh great app for you. And I if you have too. a question like, you know, the the disciples question Jesus, like, teach us how to pray. Like, how do we pray? How do, yeah. how do I pray? Yeah. Hallow provides you a wonderful resource yeah. to teach you how to pray. Yeah. yeah and it's great for any stage of, uh, of any person in their prayer life. If you have a very healthy prayer life, this can help you, um, you know, grow to the next level. If you've been struggling to pray, it's been a while, this can help you get back into it, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, no matter where you're at in your prayer life, there's something for you. So if you go to catholictalkshow.com forward slash hollow, you can get the app, try it for free on H -A -L -L -O -W. us. H-A-L-L-O-W. H-A-L-L-O-W. That's and right. For our friends out there, too, that are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, Take us take a picture of your uh, your socks. Mm -hmm. Share oh, with you yeah. know share that on on social media. I'd love to see what <laughs> people are sporting out there with sock religious. And what are you, what are your favorite components of Hallow? Like what are you doing on there? Because you might be able to inspire some of our friends and our community. <laughs> and uh, and uh, you know what are you doing with that put sock? Put my sock, put my on sock in my microphone, man. It's a sock phone. <laughs> <laughs> <Soccer phone. laughs> so yeah, big shout out to our sponsors, Sock Religious. A lot of love to them and Hollow. Yep. All right. Yeah. Now, I want to talk about one last thing. 
Um, but before I do that, I want to give a shout out and again a thank you to you, Catholic, about these these candles. Um, so if you go to store.ucatholic, I'll put a link to that below. Uh, and you can get these candles, but they have so many really cool scents. They're Catholic They're candles. Unreal. They're made They're just really, really awesome. These are 100% beeswax. They're oh. hand poured, handmade in uh, Georgia. Um, and they're all different liturgical scents. So, well, and they're beautiful. I love the I love the gold. Check this one, Immaculate Heart. So it's like oh, it's wow. a candle beautiful. in honor of our, of our Lady. It smells like roses. Mm. A beautiful yeah. scent. So if you're praying your rosary, you can light this and kind of get that additional. Scent. I love the labeling. I love the. It's really cool. Yeah, the logo. This one's called Sacred Heart. Oh wow! Yeah, that that has a traditional smell of you know entering into a church. I like that smell. That incense, incense. is amazing. Oh my goodness! Yeah, so, I don't know uh, which one I like the best. And then we got chrism burning, but then they also have ones for like Saint Joseph that smell like, like cedar and mint, like manly smells. Yeah, they're so, all like hand poured too. Like you can see the level of craft in them too as well. Yeah, and this is it's burning beautifully. I mean, they last for hours and hours. So made in the USA, baby. Yeah, go to store.ucatholic and you can get these candles for yourself. They're, you know, artisan, hand poured, mm -hmm. great thing. So thank you very much for sending these to us so that we can de-stink our studio. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so well, we I think it would be appropriate to uh, put on my stole here, and why don't we? That know, is the last thing I wanted candles. to get to. Oh, good! Is how Catholic candles are blessed. So when you Catholic sells these, they don't sell them because they're yeah because they, 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 they don't sell them as blessed that. because that's Simony Simony, right? Yeah, <laughs> I'm just covering all my bases here, right? <laughs> Anyone who wants to correct us, please. Is it Simony yeah. or Simony? Plenty of people want to correct We're us. a community. we got to help each other uh, out. Nobody's perfect. So they're not sold as blessed. But when you do get candles, you know, that you, you want to use. You need to get them blessed. You need them blessed. So, I mean, if you're, if you're an adherent of the three days of darkness where, you know, whatever, you need to have blessed beeswax candles, yeah. you know, make sure that they're blessed. But these are beeswax. So why don't you show us how a Catholic candle is blessed and what that rite is like. And let's go, can we, can we bust all three of them at yeah, once? Yeah, why not? Let's yeah. bust this one too. All right. I am always happy to, to pray with you guys and pray with everybody that's viewing and listening. What a joy to celebrate our Catholic faith. And there's no greater way to celebrate it than within the rituals of the church. Mm -hmm. And the ritual of blessing candles is an ancient ritual. And, and to realize, one, the history that we've celebrated from the Old Testament and that ever perpetual lamp, a lit within the temple, showing the presence of God and reflecting on how that has influenced the church's practice of today is a beautiful continuity of this, of this action uh, before God that I believe wholeheartedly that God rejoices in. So let us begin our prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who, who made, made heaven, heaven and earth. earth. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. O candles, I exercise you in the name of God, the Father Almighty, in the name of Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. May God uproot and cast out from these objects all power of the devil, all attacks of the unclean spirit, and all depictions of Satan, so that they may bring health of mind and body to all who use them. We ask this through the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is coming to judge both the living and the dead and the world by fire. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, light of everlasting life, you have given us candles to dispel the darkness. We humbly implore you now to bless these candles at our lowly request and hallow them by the light of your grace, by the power of the Holy Cross endow them with a heavenly blessing. May the blessing they receive be so powerful that wherever they are placed or lighted, the princes of darkness shall flee in fear along with all their legions and never more dare to disturb those who serve you, the almighty God. Let the entire building in which these candles are kept be free from the power of the adversary and be defended from the snares of the enemy. Grant, we pray, that those who will use these candles may be protected from every assault of the evil spirit and be safeguarded from all danger through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now I sprinkle the candles with holy water. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. 
Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, bless these candles at our supplication. By the power of your holy cross, pour out upon them a heavenly blessing, O Lord, who gave them to humankind in order to repel the darkness. From this signing with the holy cross, may they receive such blessing that wherever they are set up or lighted, the princes of darkness may begin to tremble and depart, may flee in fear with all their ministers from such dwelling places, and may not dare again to disquiet or molest those who serve you, Almighty God, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon us and remain with us forever. Amen. 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 Awesome. Well, thank you for that. Now we have blessed candles in here. I love it. Yeah. So again, if you do buy these candles, make sure you have them blessed. Mm-hmm. Um, again, a big shout out to our sponsors, Hollow and Sock Religious, both amazing products, and you, Catholic, for helping us out on this. But you know, this is cool. There's a lot, you know, there's a lot to candles to learn, and we couldn't even get into everything right. today. Yeah, mm-hmm. So I was just thinking. But I mean, you just see how many different ways candles are used in the church and the symbology and, and the fact that they are even sacramentals and even the fire, the flame itself is a sacramental. Mm-hmm. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. You know, but then we think about like the holy salt, holy water. <laughs> God bless you. Can you get him with the holy water? <laughs> yeah, you need a little yeah, bit. Yeah, light of... him up. Lord bless you and protect you. Thanks, man. Oh, and I have my computer. <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah, yeah. Man, thank you. <laughs> Your computer needs blessing, yeah, too. Sure. So, you know, but looking at, we have holy water, we have holy fire. Mm. You know, we have holy salt, we have so many sacramentals, and they're, they're here for us to give us graces to give us help on the path and, and to illuminate the path. Cause it can get dark out there sometimes. It can, sure. you know, and candles really super interesting. Uh, so this is a cool episode. It really was my brothers and sisters. Thank you for joining us at the Catholic talk show. Again, light those candles, keep your baptismal candles in a very safe place as well and use them devotionally whenever you may need. And as we go into this next week, Let us go in procession with lighted candle to praise our God as he means to lead us through the darkness by the comfort of his light. God bless you, and we'll see you next week. 